previously on NC Health Icon. They went to ask for it. It was black people who asked for Medunsa to be there. Mm. It wasn't the, the so white. It was something that was initiated by uh, black educationists who were advisors to the main. I was dean of students. Yes. We're totally against it. And I heard that you had that if you had an opportunity to rewrite the curriculum, you would maybe, you know, have a different approach. If you come to that, they are producing far less than that in Pretoria now. Mm. And I told him, I said, this is going to happen. Once you mix them, that's going to happen. There's going to be less and less of this. And you need these ones being where they come from, mm. the ones to come in mm. to go and do the job there. But that they did. I mean, they, they themselves, I wish they see this type of thing and they can read and tell the world why they closed the veterinary school. Mm. But anyway, and the other thing I said, if you want one veterinary school and there's only one health sciences institution in this country and that's Medunza, mm. then take the veterinary school out of Pretoria University, which is a general university, and give it to Medunza. Mm. To me, that's logical. Mm. And Minister Hanukum is the only one who supported me in this. I mean, he, <clears throat> he's still alive, he can read it. Mm. He voted with me against the removal and said, if ANC wants one, one veterinary school, it should be Medunza. Mm. Looking back? I don't think it was the right decision. Mm. We need veterinary science to help the emerging farmers to, to get there. They just are not enough that have been produced. They are good for town veterinary work. Yeah. But, I mean, we need people to, to help farming, yeah. uh, which is going to, to help the economy of the country. Yeah. No, I, I don't think it was. Mm. No. And maybe one can also just talk about the fact that, I mean, similar decisions were made around the closure of nursing colleges. And teacher training. And also closure of, you know, teacher training, teacher you know, uh, yes. colleges. Yes. Decisions which did not make sense then, and looking back now, I mean, when we look at the nursing population in South Africa, we have got a shortage, number one, yes. and the ones who are there, they are an aged population, aged in the sense that quite a significant percentage are 50 and above. That's right. Uh, and uh, we are seeing challenges now with the COVID-19 pandemic where the younger nurses who are not all of them well-trained in the private institutions, you know, as compared to the old way of training nurses, which was hospital-based. Uh, and so, you know, one could say some of the challenges around the high numbers of the mortality, obviously this is not scientifically proven, but the point though is that decision, whatever it was based on, has come back to hurt the country and it's gonna take us a long time to replace the numbers of nurses, um, you know, now in the same way that we're talking about, um, you know, the veterinary surgeons. I don't think they ever look back. You know, South Africa produced <clears throat> the most respected nursing before mm. 1994. Mm. They, they, they were wonderful pillars of healthcare, mm. right? They are not there now. You see, you can't ask the private sector whose main aim is to have profit, mm. to train a base of nurses, nurses for, for a country, like a developing country. Mm. That was the wrong move altogether. Mm. Um, and it's, had, it's hurting the country. Mm. Yes. So, mm. All right, Prof. So then um, you continued then uh, as the head of department of... Uh, uh, ONG for 12 years for 12 years and mm. then you were elevated to now being the big boss well it took two <laughs> steps I was two years deputy yes and then top for seven years so in all I was in administration for nine years and that move from admin I'm uh, sorry from academia and training you know up and coming uh, gynecologists and stuff to now full-time administration did you miss bedside, you know, clinical medicine? No, when I took up my job in administration, I made the university agree that they will allow me still to practice. Yeah. So I continued practicing partly 
Okay. I was attached in the hospital where I was, in one of the units, and I used mm. to do calls mm. in one of the units. Okay, beautiful. So I never left off. Okay. And now you had new challenges of dealing with students. Uh, students who sometimes their demands from the principal are not always the most <laughs> rational. Sometimes they will test your patience and then all of those things. How was that time uh, well, as, as, let, as, as a principal? Let me tell you, in the history of that institution, the lowest number of incidences of strikes and boycotts is in my time. Uh, Before there were many, after there were many. Yeah. But through my time was easy. What, what, but what? simply I started. <clears throat> the menu the students get has to be good. Yeah. So I said they knew there's no sacrifice on the menu of the students. Mm. And we still, we had this veterinary school. Yeah. We had egg producing chicken. Yeah. We also had uh, brawlers, you know, the brawlers come after the chicken. chickens have been, yeah. have been uh, um, laying eggs and, and the other brawlers. The, so the meat section was right. We had to buy only beef or beef, beef or lamp in the, yeah. you know, certain days. So we, we made them have three good meals. Mm. And I would kill anybody in administration if that one went wrong. Yeah. So in that time, we had one mini strike on on food, yeah, and I called in the, <clears throat> the SRC, yeah. and I asked them one by one, tell me what you eat at home in your breakfast. <laughs> I said, remember, I'm black like you, and I'm a farm boy like you, mm. and I know what I used to eat at your level in bread, breakfast, at lunches. Yeah. And they said, no, you can't ask this. I said, this one, if you say food is bad, you must compare it to your home food. Yeah. Imagine compared to a dream. Yeah. What do you have? And then they never did it again. I said, please don't waste our time dropping, yeah. uh, throwing food around you. Just eat the food. It's proper. And I had very good people in the kitchen. Yeah. They used to cook very yeah. well. So <clears> food <throat> was one of the issues. Uh, security so issues. Security. I was very close with the security forces and uh, Nehau. Mm. They were very close. They. They negotiated, negotiated even yearly prices. Yeah. We didn't go to CCMA, not once in yeah. the years. Yeah. When they didn't agree with the negotiation team, then they would line up and say, we're going to see Raholo. Mm. And they'd come to me and I opened the books. I said, you see what, how much government is giving us? Mm. I see how much I'm making from outside, from yeah. uh, privately. Yeah. Because I ran that university mostly from American money, I can tell you that. Yeah. This is the only time that made it possible. Mm. You see, I created Medunsa Trust in, in um, <clears throat> not Park Town, was this town where we were very close to, to where the head office of uh, Sasol was. Uh, Rosebank. Rosebank. Mm. Rosebank. There was, well, this, there was a building there, was Medunsa Trust. Yeah. And I made one in Washington, D.C. Mm. And the Washington, D.C. The Americans love or hate them, eh? Mm. They are the only giving nation, I can tell you, if mm. you're really serious. Mm. And they would get money. These fellows supported me and they would get money. So I, get, I got lots of money from Coca-Cola. Mm. I got lots of money of, on, from um, Pal Colgate, Palmolive, mm. Pfizer, mm. Johnson & Johnson, mm. even Gillette. Mm. These people, uh, Kellogg's. Mm. I used to go to Kalamazoo in the farms there where the, the whole earth is. Mm. Is, is, is mealy plants. That, that, uh, is that Pfizer? No, oh. Kellogg's. 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 Make, oh, okay. The fellows yes, who yes, make yes, Kellogg's yes, yeah, things. Yeah. Those fellows gave a lot of money too. So I used to get money, uh, this too, and... To augment the, what the government was yes. giving. Well, the government gave very little. I mean, even getting normal what call they did, I can tell you what the differences were. They were giving us less than we were getting from... From donors? The, uh, no, from, first from the apartheid government. Yeah. Right, they were giving us less. Anyway, the point is, <clears throat> what would then happen is, money would be collected in America to Medunsa Trust, Inc., and it would go to Medunsa Trust, uh, Jobek. Mm. So if we want money, we apply it 
through the right channels from Medunsa Trust in mm. Joburg and used it at the university. Mm. And I could send people for congresses and so on. Mm. Which, no difficulty. There's mm. always money. Mm. But I spent two months at least out of the university mm. uh, traveling, fundraising. Mm. I went to lots of people. Well, quite a lot of ANC people were very helpful mm. uh, here in the what you call, mm. uh, in my, my plight. They really mm. were. So mm. ANC is not completely dark when it comes to this. They helped mm. us make a lot of money. Yes. So um, what would you say was your highlight during your administration years at, at Medunse? I think the, if you talk about this, the um, virology department we developed there, mm. it was world class and it was mm. doing a lot of research. Mm. And to my way of thinking, it was really mm. the high point of my being yeah. at the university. So um, what would you say then, Prof, uh, in that period, um, in terms of attracting now highly rated researchers and whatever as part of your academic staff to the school, to the university? Well, it, it wasn't bad. I got yeah. quite a few of them working. It was difficult to get the clinical yeah. departments to research, but yeah. we had some good researchers yeah. there, like the late uh, Mudi, uh, Mudiba. Yes. Uh, I researched quite a bit. Uh, they, they, but the others... Mm. Couldn't and it's yeah. and and if I think there's a failure in what I did, yeah. is that I didn't get as many to research. Yeah. But department like virology and and so on did very well. Very well. Yes, and yes. They, we yeah. even had a, a medical research council yes. unit at yes. at Medunsa. Okay, now Prof, um, let's move beyond that. Then you finished your term uh, as you know an administrator this time. Uh, you were still in touch with your clinical work. Um, what did you do then after? You know, I know you had a stint in some way uh, advising, uh, I'm not sure, uh, or health professions council. Just, just tell us a little bit this, the things that you did. No, the health thereafter. profession council is a parallel route that yeah. I took. Yeah. You see, when I left Natal, yes. I was chairman of the coastal branch of the Medical Association of South yeah. Africa. Right? You remember the medical, the MASA? That's yes, the yeah. One that's the been, old one. Yeah, the one that, what you call, I'll tell, I'll let me tell you the MASA thing because it's important to my life. Yeah. I got here and I joined the Northern Transvaal Med Medical Association. Yes. At uh, the time, this was difficult time was the Biko issue and so on. Mm. It's a big, difficult time. And people, many people resigned from medical association yes. for not having put a stand... On the Steve Biko thing. On the Steve Biko thing. Yeah. My stand was, I needed to be connected to the world. Yeah. And Massa made it possible I could get research things done mm. so that my work is a good one. Yeah. You see, I couldn't completely resign, so I remained. Yeah. Then, when summer had to be formed, yeah. the mass of population all around believed, and the doctors were not members. Yeah. The only person who could do it is me. Yes. And I did that, I created summer. Yes. Summer was created by me. I spent a year hardly sleeping creating South African Medical Association. And the system. one that still exists. Still today. exists. I wasn't responsible for it being a union. Yeah, I would. Yeah, Samadu. Um, I never, I would never allow health professionals to go into a union. Yes. The principles are too different. Yes. But it was done beyond my work. But yes. I take responsibility for having changed Massa to Sama. Yes. That I did. Yes. That's that line. Now, the health professions council starts first as South African Medical and Dental Council. Yes, it's MDC. Yeah. I can't remember how I first got into it, mm. but in 1980, mm. in 1980, I became a member of the Medical and Dental Council. Mm. I remained there for a period of 25 years mm. in the Medical and Dental Council. Well, somewhere we changed from it from Medical and Dental Council to, to Health Professions Council of, of South Africa. 
uh, and I was in the interim council that mm. that formed the health professions council. Mm. Yes. And then I was in the new one for five years after mm. that, and then I came off. Yes. I came off because I couldn't continue doing what I was doing and remaining it. So those are the lines, mm. the parallel lines that I took. Mm. Um, I always felt the way we created the HPCSA, and I said so, it will remain a toothless bulldog, and it's, it's a poor picture of the medical and dental cancer. Mm. I don't think it's done anything. Mm. They allowed too much lawyers to get into it. You don't need it. Mm. Uh, a runner of health, health, the health care, should be a peer rule mm. type of, which is the medical and dental council. Work. The lawyers must come in to help only on legal details mm. that needs to be done. They went over and made the lawyers very important mm. sources. Mm. They judge doctors as if is you know you cross the stop line. Mm. You see, if I if I cut a ureter, it's not necessarily m misconduct in my opinion. Mm. Mm. It depends of circumstances around mm. that operation. Yes, lawyers stand there. They say you cut a ureter, you cut a ureter. Mm. It's a mistake, and you get charged with it. To me, mm. it's one of the failings of the HPCSA. Mm. It's not the people who really It's passed. too legalized. Yes. And the Medical and Dental Council was run mainly by experienced medical people. Mm. And the juniors were brought in to learn mm. the, the art. Mm. Now, today is not the case. They take mm. any young fellows, they get them into the HPCSA to run that. They can never be a good peer uh, governing is, yeah. body. This is unfortunate thing. And that's, that I'm sorry about. I think I'm partly responsible for it because the rules of the HPCSA were created in a body where I was. Mm. And mm. it wasn't correct. Yes. <clears throat> so, Prof, you continued then in private practice thereafter? Yes. Yeah. And you are still practicing, you know, medicine I'm even today? I'm still practicing at a slower rate now, but I'm still practicing. Mm. You are able there to wake <laughs> up at 2 a.m. to go into those emergency scissors? Well... What I've done is, well, it does happen, an odd one. What I've done is that I've told our hospital an emergency that comes to out to casualty there. Yeah. That's not my patient. They yeah. mustn't wake me up. Yeah. But I mean, I get an old patient who's mine who comes there. Yes. Then I have to get up. Yes. That's unusual. Yes. Okay. It's unusual because I plan my obstetrics yes. such that I don't have to get up too often to get, but it does happen. Yes. And um, I'm not on the roster yes. of the doctors to, to, to get me um, to calls, no. Yes. That has cut down yes. the number of emergencies completely. I hardly do an ectopic now yeah. and so on. That's yeah. the, the other fellows do it who are still young. Yeah. Prof, you have been uh, given a number uh, of honorary doctorate degrees. I mean, there's like four universities that have, you know, Medunse, uh, Porchestrom, Venda, Pretoria. Yes. What, what, you know, I've always asked myself, the doctorate that you studied for versus the one that people are giving you? I think the one they give you is honor. You know, it's important. You're being rewarded for something you've already done. Yeah, it's, it's an honor. It's, a, it's an important thing. It's somebody yeah. is honoring you. And, 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 and I feel very good about it. Um, <clears throat> it's, 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 it, I would have felt even better if my alma mater gave me one, but it hasn't. Yes, which is Natal. Yes, it hasn't. I don't expect them to do it. I don't care it comes out of what they want to call. Yeah. They won't do it for obvious reasons, but yes. it's, it's fine. Yes. All right. And then uh, you also had a stint overseas, you know, uh, especially in the UK. You know, yes, you did yeah. a lot of work, uh, you know, in and around you know, London, the yeah. Queen's this, this, this and I, that. Uh, this I think you, the late Hugh Philpott very much. Um, <clears throat> Hugh Philpott felt I need... I need a time outside this country in the research world, which, mm. which is wonderful. I spent invaluable time uh, in Britain, mm. 
mm. um, attached to leading institution, mm. doing research with them, uh, and I, I still boast of my mm. my ten my kind of uh, influence that I'm British trained in many ways. Yes, I even spent a month uh, in uh, Denmark and mm. Uruk Uruk Uruk. Uruk, Uruk, that place at the university, the place where they had an excess of doctors even yeah. that time. Yes. They produced so many doctors, doctors couldn't be employed. Yeah. It's, it's, but but uh, it, was, it, was an imp it was a great thing. Yes. So it gave mm. you that broader global mm. exposure, yes. you know, to, to, to medicine, which in turn benefits, yes. you know, South Africa. Now, when you look back at this long career of yours, Prof., um, what, you know, when you've now eventually put your stethoscope and everything aside now and you say, I'm no longer going to practice, what would you want the profession to remember you for? <laughs> oh, no, I've never. No, mm. I need this one, Prof. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know to, to, to know this is the legacy that I wanted to leave. And I think I've done enough for this to be the thing that w when you think E.T. Mukhokong, you know, Prof. E.T. Mukhokong, this is what you're thinking about. I think as a teacher of medicine. Mm. I think as a teacher of medicine, a, a builder of the workforce in healthcare. Mm. I think this is what I did, which I think I did fairly well. Yes. And in terms of your patients, you know, the, I mean, or the field of ONG, what would you like that field well, to remember I, you for? I became very popular in the early days in infertility work. Yes. Um, I, used, I used to get patients to come to King Edward this, from all over, trans guy, everywhere. Mm. Um, Crudest these things we used to work use then where I had fairly successful yes. uh, comparatively speaking outcomes of my infertility thing yes. based really I think on the facts that I made my patients understand I had time for them yes. why they are not pregnant yes. and it was even more so to make men understand why a marriage hasn't got children. Yes. It, it took, and I, I developed an interest in that. <clears throat> and and um, this, this made many families uh, come to, to terms with their situation. Yes. Um, I also had stints in IVF. Yes. Uh, first, when I was there in 76, I worked with Steps too, mm. uh, for a few weeks. Mm. in London, that's before a single first baby was produced. Mm. Um, and that's why I came back to Natal. I tried to set up mm. a unit, unit. Natal, uni, Natal province refused. And um, then they started the Stellenbosch one. Yeah. And that was a wonderful unit. I used to Work talk to them. what called it was a good one. They, yeah. Those fellows were very good in Stellenbosch. Mm. <clears throat> then I came to Pretoria in 78. I tried to set one up here. Ultimately, they agreed that we must use the one in Pretoria mm. conjointly. That's why yes. the on, on andrology part of that clinic was done at Medunsa. Yes. Uh, but the egg transference and so was done in Pretoria. And it was yeah. working very well for yeah. the two universities. Yeah. Yeah. So... My popularity in the subject is yes. related to infertility. Yes, yes. I, I do agree that the modern people are now on IVF. Yes. I'm not particularly satisfied yes. with the level of success mm. where this country is with IVF. I think it could do better. Yes. <clears throat> right. People out there who are not from the medical space, what would they... You know, what would you like them to remember you as? Because you, you are more than just a doctor, a, a professor, an ONG specialist. You are also a father. You are also, you know, a, a wise man. You are also a grandfather. You are, you are also many things beyond medicine. 
I, I, I think they must try to remember me as a person who tried to do his best, mm. who tried to follow Christian principles as closely as possible. Mm. And I think this has backed my life. Mm. And I know how impossible it is to be a good, a good 100% Christian. Yes, yes. It's very difficult, yes. but I tried. You now have kids, you've got grandchildren, I'm not sure if you've got great-grandchildren as well, but when they look at you, Urahul, you know, or our father, you yeah. know, um, you know, I mean, your daughter Grand, is... Grandpa, the old majority of them say, Grandpa, Grandpa. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, in, in your 80th birthday, they even had an item there for you, you know, as the grandchildren. Now, yes. you've got a son who is a doctor, you yes. have a daughter have who two. is doing medicine. Oh, two. yes, and then uh, the other son passed on, unfortunately. Yes, yes. well, the Sam. Yes. Right, Sam, Sam is Sam, my, Sam is your nephew. It's my adopted son. Yes. It's never my, all my sister did was give birth to that fellow. Yeah. And I adopted him almost from day one. Yes. So I, I brought him up. Yes. And that, so that's a neurosurgeon. A, yes, a neurosurgeon. Who, who, who separated Mpo and Mponyana. Yeah, that's my son. Right. And I have the son who died. Yes. I have another one who's now doing uh, postgraduate radiology. Yes. Right. And um, I have a stepdaughter. Yes. That I brought up and trained. She's an anesthetist. Yes. And I have a stepdaughter who trained as a law in, in economics. She's something big in, yes. in, in, in NetBank. Yes. And I have my blood daughter yes. that send you running around like yes. this. Yes. And she's, she's, okay. she's a wonderful person. Yes. Mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, Prof. One last thing uh, that I did not ask about UNITRA. You played a role in the setup of the medical school there. Just briefly because we are about to finish. Well, um, I, I, I was asked, I used to go in, inspect the area, advice on how they should go with the curriculum. Yes. And I was very close to Dan Nayana. Yes, Prof. Dan Nayana. Right. Yes. yes, and the building of the Mandela Hospital. Yes. I went many times to advise on it and where it should be built. Yes. So I, that's, those are the, the roles yes. I played. Wow. Okay. Um, any regrets when you look at your life? Any, any regrets as we close? I don't think I have, I have any. I, I just, my, if you have any regret, is that I'm a South African. Yeah. And color is still such an important thing. Yeah. That, that saddens me. Yes. It really saddens me because, you know, coming from where we come from, we, we should jump this, we should show the world it doesn't, it's not the right thing. Mm. And they're very, very good South Africans and we should build this country. Mm. And I'm afraid we're not doing so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, this one is a naughty question I'm going to ask you mm. and you can choose to answer it or not answer mm. it, Prof. You know, there's, there's, there's a saying out there that the guys who chose to do gyne, ops and gyne, Mm. I'm not about the guys, because the majority mm. is it's it's, males. It's males, yeah. uh, Are people who um, were quite good uh, at, at relating with people of the opposite sex in general, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, who would then choose that their career should be where other people play. You don't have to answer that one, Prof, if you feel it's naughty. But, uh, well, it but is, generally, uh, most gynies, uh, I'm told, uh, the male gynies are people who really... Yeah. I think I would fall into that. Yeah. I'd fall into that group um, that I tried. I think it, it explains, for instance, why I married three times. Yeah. It does explain. Yeah. And uh, when, you, when I look back, I blame nobody except myself. Yes. That's right. Yes. No, Prof, thank you very much. No, uh, thanks. For, for the time that you've given us. It's a Sunday. It's been long hours of talking, but... Uh, you have really shared so much uh, with us, but you know, thank you very much for giving us your time. Yeah. No, thanks very much. Thank you, Prof. On next week's episode on SA Health Icon.
As a gift uh, for you from your alma mater, we are so proud of you.